Well, from franchise sequels to remakes, that's just what summer movie season is about this year, I guess, because apparently original properties are fewer and further between these days. But at least this is a remake of something we haven't seen in a while, and I might be a little biased about this one because the original Twister back in the day was one of the most fun nights at the movies I've ever had. I went with a bunch of my friends and I don't know what it was exactly, but with the combination of the action, the comedy, the natural disaster carnage, and all of us being there goofing off together, we just had a blast. So when I heard they were making a new one, I was like, oh, come on, man, don't taint this for me, just assuming it would be bad. I think that's the first gut reaction that most of us have to these types of things now. So admittedly, my expectations for Twisters were low, but I liked it. I don't think it's as good as the first one. I think the original Twister hits higher highs, is more exciting, and overall is a better movie. But this one's all right. I do think the marketing campaign hurt it a little bit. Going in, I had no idea what this film's deal was. Is it a sequel? Is it a remake? No one seemed to know. And the reason is that even the movie itself was confused about that because it plays like it's trying to be both. Technically, it's a remake, but if you just recast Maura Tierney's character with Helen Hunt, then it could easily be a sequel. Even though Daisy Edgar Jones's character is basically a rejiggered version of Helen Hunt from the first movie, that's how close it is. So I don't know if they were trying to have their cake and eat it too, but you need to pick a lane at some point, dudes, because this can get confusing if you're not careful. So the movie tries to do this balancing act where it incorporates a lot of elements from the first film while also doing its own thing, sort of. Are you seeing this? Okay, we got sisters. We got twins! Twins! Yeah, they, uh, they tried. Maybe not as hard as they could have. Like, this film begins the same way the original one ends, and then it goes off in a new direction. Still the same idea, storm chasers trying to study tornadoes and figure out how to stop them, but putting a new-ish spin on it. I don't think that new spin is as good as the old one, though. Don't get me wrong, it's not like the original film is some great cinematic masterpiece or anything. In hindsight, it is pretty ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun, too. It knows exactly what kind of movie it is, it delivers the thrills of big summer blockbuster needs. Sure, the storm chasers are a bunch of dorks, but when Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt are driving all over the road, desperately trying to dodge all the flying cars and trees and debris the tornado's throwing at them, and Helen's screaming, turn right, turn left, right, left, right! <laughs> It is really hard to not be entertained by that shit. And that particular vibe was missing here. They dialed back on the zaniness and replaced it with something down to earth. This one takes a more science-based approach, so there's less smashing straight through houses that get blown onto the road and, very unfortunately, fewer flying cows. <laughs> and more science talk about cloud formations and wind speed and humidity and things like that, all for the sake of getting to more or less the same place that the first film got to. And look, I do appreciate movies where the characters are smart and know what they're doing and don't do incredibly stupid things just to advance the plot. But you do want that plot to be exciting. And it can be, but it uses a lot of the same ideas the original movie had, and that movie just had a more dynamic way of pulling them off. For example, Daisy Edgar Jones's character has a very similar origin as Helen Hunt from the original Twister, but the consequences are not as interesting. She survived survives a traumatic event when she gets too close to a tornado, and afterwards she's sad and depressed and overly cautious, and there's nothing wrong with that. She acts it well, she's sympathetic, but the character becomes very closed off from everyone and kind of stuck in first gear, getting pushed around by the plot for a while because of this. Whereas the Helen Hunt version of this character was kind of a maniac. That traumatic experience really messed her up and she did some pretty crazy things, but you knew why she was the way she was and by God, she drove that entire movie because she was so messed up. But this movie never takes any big swings like that. Instead, the trauma gets addressed with a conversation and some crying and there isn't even a tornado in that scene. It's not bad, but this is a tornado movie, so 
shouldn't there be one in there somewhere? Also, there's relationship stuff, which, again, isn't bad, it's just not as good. It's not really a love story this time, because every female character's gotta be a strong, independent woman now, so instead, it's a flirtation. Two attractive people are showing a little chemistry, sharing looks, seems like they're kinda into each other, and then they go chase a tornado. There could have been a relationship or some kind of romance at stake, but the movie just doesn't go there. So maybe they'll do something with this, maybe they'll get together at the end, and if they do, cool, but if they don't, it's no big deal because that was never something the movie was too concerned with. Now compare this to Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton's characters from OG Twister. Their marriage is on the rocks, there's a lot of hard feelings, they're getting divorced, he's getting remarried to someone else, but over the course of the movie, they resolve their differences and realize they still love each other. There's something personal on the line for both of them, and in a way, the tornadoes bring them back together. Now, which one of these scenarios sounds more interesting to you? Which one gives you more to root for? Which one has more heart, do you think? And I'm not saying there had to be a romance. Not at all. There's no rule that says two attractive leads in a movie have to hook up. Hell, sometimes it's more refreshing if they don't. But if doing something like that would make things more compelling, then... Don't take it off the table, at least. Instead of that, they focus more on Daisy Edgar Jones' character overcoming her trauma, which is a perfectly fine way to go, but they don't even hammer that nail as hard as OG Twister did. The trauma doesn't even cause her to do anything that impacts the plot that much. She's just sad and has survivor's guilt, which she keeps to herself, never really acts out because of this, and then she gets over it. And there wasn't really anything about it that I actively disliked, but they took a weirdly subdued approach to the whole thing. Like, instead of passionately screaming out her emotions as a tornado bears down on her, she's calmly talking out her issues in a barn with no tornado in sight. There were more compelling ways to get from A to B here, is what I'm saying. And I think that's my biggest issue with the movie. It plays everything a little too safe. There are a bunch of things the filmmakers could have done to up the stakes or make things more interesting, more exciting, that they just pass on. Like, a certain character will show up, they're very nice, the others are really close with them, and so you think for sure that pretty soon a tornado is gonna roll in and kill this person or put them in danger or something, and that's gonna spur everyone into action to get shit done, but then that doesn't happen. There's no tornado, no danger, they just show up to have a conversation, and that's it. And I'm left to wonder, why does this person have plot armor when not having it would make for a better story? I don't know, but that applies to way too many characters here. Too many people have plot armor, so you're never really afraid for them. Even the bad guys, to the extent that the film has anyone to root against, which it barely does, are safe. Prominent characters are in life-threatening situations, but I never bought that something bad would happen to them because the movie just doesn't seem to have the balls to do that. The action is fine, but doesn't get as crazy as you'd expect in a movie like this, and the big moments from the trailer, like the twin tornadoes and the fire tornado, don't play as big of a role as you might think either. There's nothing super interesting done with them. I think the studio just wanted stuff that would look cool in the promos, and I don't get that. They have some fun ideas here that could up the ante from the original movie, but they're over and done with them very quickly once they've got the trailer shots in the can. It just seemed like a waste. I don't want to sound like I'm shitting on the movie, though. It might seem like I hated it, but I really didn't. I like the actors a lot. Glenn Powell has leading man written all over him. That guy's got charisma to spare. Daisy Edgar Jones has this really endearing girl next door quality to her. The two of them work really well together. The characters are all likable. They don't put any political nonsense in there. The filmmakers seem to genuinely like and respect the film they're remaking, which isn't always the case. I enjoyed myself for the most part, and overall, there isn't that much here that higher stakes and a shot of adrenaline couldn't fix. I just think the script was one or two polishes away from from being a lot more engaging. I'm not saying you shouldn't see Twisters. I think there's fun to be had with this movie. I think you'll have more fun if you watch the 1996 film instead, but you can say that about most remakes. The original was better. Stop the presence. If Twisters commits one crime, it's not working hard enough to measure up to the first movie and settling for being just... good. So in the future, take some bigger swings. Take a risk. Try something different. Or, you know, just stop remaking classic films and make something new for a change. That'd be nice too.
Thanks so much for watching. While you're here, ding that bell icon and follow my social media so you can always be notified when I upload new stuff. The links are down there. And don't forget to do all the other YouTube things. Smash that like button, leave a comment, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you're still subscribed because what really deserves to have its house destroyed, its car blown away, and be forced to dodge flying cows as it runs for its life from a giant tornado is the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. I'll be back with more soon. Take care. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time.